Hey guys, Zong here, back with another math video. Um, I got a new microphone, and I, hopefully you know the uh, audio quality is going to be better. Um, today we're going to be doing a rather simple, deceptively simple problem. Um, and the problem is as such. Suppose that you have a sphere, a three-dimensional sphere, and suppose that on the sphere, you choose four random points. So maybe a point there, maybe a point there. You can't really tell where they are because it's three it's three dimensional. Maybe a point there, maybe a point there. Now drawing these points, connect these points in a tetrahedron. And the question basically asks what is the probability that this tetrahedron encompasses the center point of the circle? So what is the probability that four random points placed on the sphere, um, which creates a tetrahedron, what's the probability that that tetrahedron will encompass the center of the circle? Now pause the video if you want to work on this. Um, and without further ado, I will go on to the solution. Now the first thing you want to notice, and it's, it's a little hard to notice conceptually but the first thing you want to notice is we want to begin by placing the first three points on the sphere so let's assume this these three points are placed like so and after placing the third th those three points where can we place the fourth point such that the tetrahedron will encompass the center well what we can do is we can actually draw the so let's say this point is facing us on the sphere. We can draw a uh, a line through the center from that point to the other side of the sphere. So this is on the far side now. Um, and we can do this uh, like so. So that now there, by drawing uh, a line from these points through the center to the other side of the sphere, the other side of the sphere it cuts a triangle into the other side of the sphere the same size as the original triangle because it's just sort of a reflection in a sense reflection about a point what actually is interesting is that as long as the fourth point is inside this triangle the tetrahedron will encompass the center but if it's outside the triangle it won't and why is this well, if you think about it, let's say the point I am drawing, let's say the fourth point is right on the corner of this triangle. That means that this line from this point to this point, this tetrahedron, its edge will be barely going through the center. If the point is any more here, then the edge will be outside of the center. Same with this point. If this point were to if this point, sorry, uh, let's actually use this point because these two are in a line and it's sort of hard to see. If, if this point were the fourth, fourth point and we drew the tetrahedron like so, again, the edge of this tetrahedron would be barely touching the center. And if this point were any further out this way, the, the tetrahedron would be outside of the center. So hopefully you sort of see why. And, and if we draw it on one of these edges, then we can see that the center barely lies on the face of the tetrahedron. And you further out, and the center no longer, no longer lies in the tetrahedron. So we can actually, we actually now realize that the fourth point has to be within the area, within the spherical triangle, because the triangle is sort of bendy because it's on the sphere. Within the spherical triangle outlined by the first three points. So in this sense, we can actually narrow this question down. We have to find the probability that the fourth point is within the area generated by the first three points. And thus, the probability is just the expected area of the triangle created by the first three points divided by the total surface area of the sphere. Now, without loss of generality, let's assume the surface area is equal to 1. So now we just have to find the expected area of this triangle um, in order to find the probability that the, all four points encompass a tetrahedron that encompasses the center. So what's the expected trying, uh, expected area of a triangle where when you place four, three random points on the sphere, uh, the, the triangle will be created? 
that's also that's that's a question that's also quite difficult and this is the probably the hardest part of the question so I want you to pause the video again if you need to I want you to try solving again find the expected value of the area of a triangle in a sphere in which the surface area of the sphere is one and the three points are randomly placed all right now this solution is a little weird but I'll do my best to explain the let's label these points a B and C let's label the points so we're going to draw a line through the center again. I don't know why I erased those lines. Let's call this point A prime. Let's call this point B prime. And let's call this point C prime. What's interesting is that when you randomly choose a point A, you are also arbitrarily randomly choosing a point A prime. A prime is just as random as A because when you choose A randomly on the sphere, it defines a singular a prime that is also just as random as a. The probability of choosing a prime is the same probability as choosing a on the sphere. And thus, the expected value of this triangle, bc a prime, is also the same as the expected value of the area of abc. And we can see that applies to a, a c b prime as well. Because B prime is just as random as B, the expected value of the area of the triangle ACB prime is just as equal to the expected value of the triangle ABC. So is the expected value of the triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, which is actually equal to the area of ABC anyways. All these triangles, now we can actually see we have a new triangle here, A prime, B prime, and C, which also has an equal expected value for its area as ABC. And if we connect all these triangles together, we can't really do that because of my horrible diagram. What will happen is that it will actually encompass the entire surface area of the sphere. And because of my horrible diagram, you can't see that. But this should actually be over here because the sphere is cur curved. Just, just if you test it out, trust me, it will work. Uh, any combination of A or A prime, B or B prime, C or C prime, and you take one from each of these, you'll get a triangle. You'll get a random triangle that has the same expected value. And if you add all these triangles together, they'll form the surface area of the sphere. So, how many such triangles are there? Well, you can either have A or A prime. B or B prime, C or C prime. So that's two possibilities times two possibilities times two possibilities, which equal to eight total triangles of same expected value area. And the eight total triangles encompass the entire surface area of the sphere. I'm afraid I couldn't draw that very well. But you have to believe me, the eight total triangles, all, all these possible combinations encompass the complete surface area of the sphere. And since they all have the same expected area, each triangle takes up one eighth of the sphere surface area. So the probability that the fourth point falls into the area of A prime, B prime, C prime is one eighth. And that's the probability that the tetrahedron encompasses the center of the sphere. So the moment of inertia, the books uh, the weight has the force has increased and the distance has increased on this side of the on this side of the edge of the table. Because W plus K is the force, and the distance has increased because we shifted the book to the left. Which means that we can, 